welcome back to another video. Now today it's all about microinverters, specifically the range of N-phase IQ microinverters. Now there's six in their current model range and the purpose of this video is to help you make the right decision for your home by selecting the right microinverter. So before we dive into the individual specifications of each product, first let's start with what is the same about each and every one of them. Well, visually they all look identical and they're all the same weight, 1.1 kilogram. So if you're doing a structural calculation for your solar system, you need to use 1.1 kilogram for the weight of the inverter and its mounting bracket. Apart from that, they all come with Enphase's 25 year product warranty. So that's pretty impressive because most hybrid inverters either come with a five, eight or a 10 year. So having micro inverters, is gonna give you a 25 year cover. Now that's where the similarities end. What we're gonna do now is go into the two ranges and cover off the various technical differences. So let's start with the IQ7 range of Enphase micro inverters. Okay, so the IQ7 has been around for about four or five years and it's been a pretty robust product. It's got millions of hours of testing and has proven to be a very reliable microinverter with only a reported one in 3000 failure rate. And the first one to hit the market was this product here. This is the IQ7 with nothing at the end of it. And it was the first IQ7 to come onto the market. And I've got some of the specs of the product on this sheet here, because I can't remember them all. So let's run through the various technical aspects. So this had a peak rating of 245 watts, but a continuous rating of 240 watts. It had a max input of ampage of 10 amps. So that's the amp of the panel you couldn't put more than 10 amps into an each of your IQ7s. It had a rated efficiency of 96.5% and they cost around £87 so it's the cheapest in the range however I don't actually think you can buy the IQ7 on its own anymore I think it has been discontinued. So just something to mention before we dive into this comparison review is a question that comes up all the time around sizing of microinverters to solar panels and that question is why would you pair something like this that's rated at 290 watt with a panel that's 400 watt surely you're missing out on a lot of generation well the key is in how panels are tested and sized so when you see a panel wattage say 400 watt what that means is it's watts peak it's its maximum potential and that potential is assessed under something called STC, so standard test conditions. Now standard test conditions are when panels are put under a set of circumstances to get their rated power. So a 400 watt panel is measured at 1000 watts of light per metered squared at 25 degrees. Now here in the UK, we don't really get 1000 watts per meter squared of light. We get more like six or 700 watts per meter squared. Now in summer, you might get 1000 on the odd day, but throughout the year, we average about 600 in summer and about 350, 400 in winter. So what that means is your 400 watt panel is more like 320 watt, 330 watt on your average UK day. There's a way to measure this energy and it's something called sun irridance. Now you can actually find out online the sun irridance for your area. So you can type in your postcode in one of these Google tools and it will tell you how much watt per meter squared your area gets all year round, depend on historical data. Now what you do when you size a microinverter or any inverter, you want it working as hard as possible. So if this is working at 290 watt and a 400 watt panel is achieving about 320 watt, you're working at its maximum potential and that's when it's most efficient. So that's the IQ7 put to one side. And the conclusion here is it's been discontinued. It's quite a low output and really you'd only pair that with a lower output panel which are actually more expensive to buy than a high efficiency panel now. Now we're on to the IQ7 Plus as so this was the second product to launch and this product is rated at 290 watt continuous and it can sp um, spike up to 295 watt. It's got a maximum input voltage, as an ampage rather, of 12 amps, but its voltage range starts from 16 amps. And this is another benefit of microinverters. When you have a string inverter or a hybrid inverter, you need lots of panels 
wired together in series to give you a lot of volts to kick on the actual inverter to convert it from DC to AC. When you have a micro inverter, you need about 10% of the equivalent of a hybrid inverter. So this here has got a voltage range of 16 to 60 volts. If you had a traditional hybrid inverter, expect to see between 150 and 200 volts, so a big difference. And that's why you get the performance from these IQ7s. Now this product is actually a heatable favorite. We have fitted thousands of these and we generally pair them with a 420 watt module. When you module um, spec increases above 420 watt, we would recommend going for the IQ7A, but if you've got a module up to 420 watt, that is a perfect pairing. And that brings us nicely onto the IQ7A. So this was the third iteration of the IQ7 range. And this product is rated at 366 watts. So it's the most powerful IQ7 that they offer. However, there is a small downside, which is that operating range increases by two volts. So in a low light setting, like the UK, we do actually see increased performance with an IQ7, but in a highlight setting, you'll get increased performance with the IQ7A. Now on this subject, Enphase actually published their own data and it's a comparison test between this, the IQ7 Plus, and the IQ7A. Now this test was done in the Netherlands and it was using a 420 watt peak module. It was a test run for 12 months, and what they found that between the two inverters, there was only a 0.46 difference in performance when using the A over the plus, and this was all to do with clipping. So clipping is the maximum theoretical output of the inverter. So if that panel did get up, sort of past, you know, 320, 350 watts, the IQ7 Plus couldn't convert anymore, but the A could but the plus made it up at the bottom end. Now, when you think about the price difference between the two modules here, you're looking at about 30 pounds price between an IQ7 Plus and an IQ7A. So on a 10 panel system, that's around 300 pounds. And for 0.46, percent of improvement on performance is probably not worth the extra money, which is why here at Heatable from the 7 range, we've always preferred this, the IQ7 Plus. It's cheaper, it's got a lower startup voltage, and for the UK, 290 watts seems to be a real sweet spot when it comes to panel performance. Now, lots of people have different opinions on this. Here at Heatable, we go on data and we go on testing. We partner with REA Australia for their panel technology, and they have tens and tens of thousands of the various micros installed, and this is their class leading product. So that's the IQ7 range. Now we're gonna move on to is the IQ8 range. So this was released late 2023 for the UK, but I think it was out early 2023 for the States and Australia. And we've had some subtle changes and some improvements in the technology. So the entry level product for the IQ8 is this one here. It's the IQ8 MC. So the MC is rated at 325 watts. It's got a slightly higher ampage input, so you can put a higher amp panel into an IQ8, and that's rated at 14. And it's got an operating voltage of between 18 and 49. So it's not as good as the IQ7 Plus, um, and it's not as good as the IQ7A, because it's clipping at the top, but it's still got a pretty wide range. Efficiency is improving with the IQ8 as well. So the whole entire IQ7 range was rated at 96.5, and with the IQ8 range, you've got efficiencies around 97.4%. So an additional percent does count when it comes to solar. Warranty, obviously still 25 years, but the prices are starting to increase. So for an IQ8 MC, you're gonna be looking around 122 pounds in the UK per inverter. So it does start getting more expensive. The next one up in the range is the AC. So the AC, is very similar to the IQ7A and it's rated at 360 watts. So it's in that same sort of power band. However, what it does have is a higher ampage input, so it can take 14, whereas this can only take 10.2. Rating is the same as the IQ-AMC, so it's 97.3%. 
price wise 134 pounds so again it's getting more expensive but it is obviously slightly higher output and it's got that extra one percent efficiency and that brings us on to the top of the range product so this is the IQA HC. And now the HC model is the highest ever rating of an M phase microinverter. It's rated at 380 watts. So a very, very powerful product. Still can take 14 amps input current. Its operating voltage is 18 to 49, so slightly higher than the seven range, but its efficiency is 1% higher at 97.4. But price-wise, these are coming in at 142 pounds. So when you compare something like an IQ8AC to an IQ7 Plus, you're talking on a retail perspective at 500 pounds. So you have to be able to justify that extra cost. And in our opinion, unless you've got a panel rated higher than 420 watts, you want to be staying with the IQ7 range. Once you're above that, you should be looking at the IQ8 products. Just something to address with the IQ8. There was lots of talk at launch that the product was going to be able to function if the grid had dropped to keep your solar system on. But this isn't the case for the UK. Now, it is the case that the IQ8s have something called sunburst technology built into them, but it's not approved here in the UK. If you're in the rest of the world, you can make use of this function, which is when the grid falls away or goes down, they'll provide you a certain level of power. For it to function here in the UK, you need a gateway. So Tesla have these and Enphase are bringing their own. It's called the IQ System Controller. Now what that will do is disconnect your property from the grid because if your solar system is producing power and you were going to export it to the grid, someone's working to repair the line down the way, you export some energy, you're going to get a nasty shock. So the IQ System Controller is required if you want to run your IQ8 off-grid. However, there is good news. The IQ system controller works with the IQ7 range of microinverters. It also works with their IP battery 5Q, whatever they're called, battery systems, and it's going to be available in 2025 at some point. Something to bear in mind that when you're having an Enphase solar system installed, not only do you need to buy the microinverters, but you also need to buy one of these. This is the Envoy, and this is the communication bridge between the microinverters on your roof and the app or the Enphase Enlightened app on your phone. So you'll need the microinverters, they'll come down the roof in AC, and you'll have one of these installed in your property, and you'll have two CT clamps. One CT clamp will go around the production of the microinverters, and and the other clamp will go around the grid so you can measure your home energy consumption. So there you have it, a full review of the entire range of IQ products from Enphase. Now, when it comes to making a recommendation for which one you should be buying for your system, it largely depends on the module that you're gonna pair it with. So if you've got a lower output module, say 400, 420 watt, I'd probably make use of the IQ7 Plus range because it's affordable and it still performs really, really well. However, if you're pushing your module limits up to say 440 watt, 450 watt and an iq8 hc is the place to be we're actually going to link that end phase white paper below in the description so you can see the results of that test between the iq7a and the iq7 plus now we'd also love to hear your comments around if you have microinverters or you install microinverters, which system do you prefer? Obviously, it's interesting to see that people have different opinions and generally favor one of the products. If you've enjoyed this video and you want to learn more about solar systems, battery systems, and general PV video content, then please do like and subscribe to the Heatable YouTube channel where we post lots of content, including a really interesting video that we did where we compared Enphase microinverters against a hybrid inverter for 305 days to put the manufacturer claims to test that microinverters produce more energy and the result was very, very interesting. So check that video out on the channel.